Well, thanks for joining me again for this week's devotional video. And uh, we're going to continue our studies on certain themes uh, through the prophet Isaiah. And uh, today I want to look at Isaiah 58. And in this chapter, we find a contrast, a stark contrast between self-centered, self-energized, self-focused devotion, religious practices, and God-centered, life-giving worship and uh, the joy uh, and refreshing that we have by walking with our Lord and worshiping Him. And it's all centered around Sabbath. But let me start with the beginning of the chapter. He starts off by talking about uh, how the people of God are focused on their devotion. Uh, there's a, the theme of fasting here uh, and prayer uh, and serving the Lord. And uh, cry aloud, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Declare to my people their transgression to the house of Jacob, their sins. Yet they seek me daily, delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the judgment of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why have we fasted and you seen it not? Why have we humbled ourselves and you take no knowledge of it? Behold, in the day of your fast, you seek your own pleasure and oppress all your workers. At the beginning of the chapter, we have this, what seems to be um, a, 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 a real uh, piety um, and a genuine devotion to God. Uh, fasting, prayer, seeking the Lord, delighting to do his ways. Uh, but it's all centered around themselves. Uh, and and uh, the result of that is that people are afflicted and oppressed and wronged and treated with contempt and marginalized. Um, and the Lord is not pleased with this. But the chapter ends with, uh, with true religion and what the Lord longs for us. Listen uh, to uh, Isaiah as he closes the chapter. Isaiah chapter 58. Verse 13, if you turn back your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways, or seeking your own pleasure, or talking idly, then you shall take delight in the Lord, and I will make you ride on the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of Jacob, your father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. What a difference between the beginning and the ending of that chapter. Following Jesus is meant to be a life filled with joy, contentment, and refreshment. Uh, you could call it a joy ride. <laughs> the ride of your life, as one author put it. Um, now, what brings this kind of experience into our life? Is it our religious devotion? Is it uh, the practices uh, that we keep, like prayer and fasting? Um, is it those things that God wants from us? No. It's all centered around the idea of Sabbath here. The idea of Sabbath. He says, if you turn back your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord. Call it honorable, the Sabbath. Now, some, uh, some Christians assume that any talk about the Sabbath uh, or Sabbath keeping is legalistic. That's Old Testament talk. Um, and it becomes defense. They become defensive in some way. Sabbath, Sabbath keeping, uh, however, is one of the Ten Commandments. Right, equally, right alongside of, of thou shalt not kill or steal or lie or covet or commit adultery, uh, it is a law of the Lord. Uh, it is his way. It is his purpose for our lives. And not only that, Jesus said that if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And so obedience to the ways of the Lord are essential 
to uh, our devotion to him. Um, we're called to do what God commands us to do uh, because he is the Lord. And, and we're called to do it because we reverence him as the Lord and because we love him and we love his ways and because obedience to him leads to contentment and joy and delight in our lives. Jesus further said this in John 15, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. <laughs> Did you catch that? The Lord desires for you to have a full life of joy and delight. And it doesn't come from us getting our way, but it comes from us following the ways of the Lord. But even deeper than that, it comes from us knowing the Lord. He is joy. He is delight. He is life. There is a delight from walking in the paths of God because he is joy. He is life. The other thing, too, is that there was a transition that happened from the Old to the New Testament. The Sabbath was part of creation order. There was a rhythm that God set up. Six days of labor and work and the seventh day of rest. Work was to be followed by rest. We work hard, now we take a rest. But in the New Testament, the Sabbath, that holy day, shifts from the last day of the week to the first day of the week. A new rhythm has been established. We rest, and out of our rest, we work. We do the Lord's will. We delight in serving Him and in serving others. This is the Lord's day. And out of the Lord's day flows life, obedience, and joy and delight. It is a day when we delight in Him. We know Him. It is a day when we worship Him. It is a day when we intentionally center our lives and orient our lives around Him and to Him. You see, Sabbath is meant to bring us near to God, and out of that nearness to God, the fountain of life flows into all of our life. It's not Sabbath itself or Sabbath keeping itself that is our ultimate delight, but God in whom we meet during Sabbath, when we worship on the Sabbath. He is our delight. He is our life. His ways. Sabbath brings us near to him, and there can be no greater joy than being near to God. Jesus invited the weary to come to him and to find rest. He invited them to take his yoke upon them, to find his life in him, in his work, in his ways. And then from that, our walk would be easy and light and life-giving. Jesus is our Sabbath. A God-centered life is meant to give joy and delight. Sabbath is resting in Christ, is designed to help the weary. It's a picture of gospel rest, of the salvation that God has given to us, and it's reorienting our lives constantly back to the strong, enduring principles that God's grace alone, by his work alone, in Jesus Christ alone, and in faith in him alone and for his glory alone. And it is a foretaste of heaven, eternal rest, and awesome and eternal delight in being in the presence of the living God. Now Isaiah begins by rebuking this empty religion uh, that's called self-centered. Uh, in uh, verse one, he calls it sin. Uh, in verse three, he tells them that they're seeking their own pleasure and yet, uh, true devotion is, is meant to be healing and transformative and life-giving. But they've become exploitive. They've become manipulative. Uh, 
they've become t contemptuous. What can I expect, though, if I delight in the Lord and rest in Him? And I just want to finish with these points that I, Isaiah uh, brings before us. And they're found in verses 8 to 12 of Isaiah 58. What can I expect when my life is oriented to the Lord the, of our rest, the Lord we find rest in? Well, he says, then your light will break forth like the dawn. Fresh beginnings. My friend, are you at a place right now where you wish you could have a reset? Where you could start once again? Well, I'm calling you back to the Lord. Find your rest and delight in Him. He wants to reset your life with Him at the helm, with Him as the driving force, with Him as your delight. Secondly, and your healing shall spring up speedily. Healing and restoration. Are you feeling broken, downtrodden, oppressed, deserted? The Lord provides healing for you. He loves you and he wants to strengthen you from the inside out. Turn to him. Rest in him. Thirdly, uh, he says, um, and your righteousness shall go before you. Um, security. Security in knowing that it is not about your own personal righteousness, but it is in the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ on your behalf. Delight in him, in his righteousness, and what he has done for you. Fourth, the glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Who's got your back? Who's looking out for you in the places that you cannot see and that you are blind to? Protection from enemies, from the relentless enemy of your soul and from the self-deceiving enemy within and the saturating influence of this destructive world system. The Lord is your protector. He will keep you. He will be your rear guard. He's got your back. Fifth, verse 9. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. Did you get that? The Lord wants to speak to you. Communion with the living God, with the creator of your life and soul and eternity. Communion with God. Rest in him. Six, verse 10. If you pour yourself out for the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be as the noonday. Hope, hope. There is a better future. There is a destiny that is beautiful. <laughs> the Lord writes the end of your story, my friend. Rest in him, trust in him, delight in him. Next, uh, guidance, verse 11. And the Lord will guide you continually. Oh, how we need that, don't we? Oh, if we had someone to just show us what would be the wise thing to do right now. You rest in the Lord, my friend. He will guide you. Contentment. He will satisfy your desire in scorching places. <laughs> the Lord wants you to be satisfied. He wants to bless you with contentment. Once again, rest in him. Next, and your gloom will be as, um, sorry, and he will make your bones strong, strength, endurance, perseverance. Does it seem like everything in life is against you? Everyone stands in your way. My dear friend, rest in the Lord. He will be your strength. He will renew your strength. Find him, Jesus, to be your Sabbath. Next, refreshment. Verse 11, 
and the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your desire and make your bones strong. And listen to this. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose waters do not fail. Isn't that a beautiful picture? Our refreshing God, our life-giving God, he is meant to refresh your soul. Are you feeling weary right now? Look to him. Call out to him. Find strength and refreshment in him. And finally, rebuilding. That brings us back to the reset once again. As your life crumbled, listen, and your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt, and you shall rise up, you shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, <laughs> the restorer of streets to dwell in. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> oh, I have this picture of this demolished building where a contractor comes in and goes, hey, I can see something beautiful here. And he gets to work. And the Lord wants to get to work to restore your life, to rebuild what you have broken, uh, to reorient what you have made completely disoriented. The Lord wants to come and refresh and renew your life. All this and more from resting in the Lord, finding him to be our Sabbath. Our God is refreshing, life-giving. Do you know him? Let me invite you to trust in Jesus Christ today. He has hope for you because he is your hope. He is your peace. He is your joy. He died on the cross for your sins and he offers you life today. If you will humble yourself before him, and call upon his name for his grace, his salvation, and seek his way. He wants to restore your life. And dear friend, dear Christian, continue to live in the joy of the gospel, that gospel message every day of your life. Live in the rhythm of rest to work. Let your life be centered in, in the Lord Jesus Christ. And out of that comes the joy of serving him and blessing others. Thank you, Lord, for these words from the prophet once again, life-giving words, reassuring words, words of refreshment because they come from our life-giving, hope-filled, um, rebuilding God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for Jesus and the grace that you offer to us through him. In his name we pray. Amen. God bless you.